Hi, this is John Hoban with the Society for Participatory Medicine, back with Jennifer Marone on the DOME project. Uh, Jennifer, you had mentioned the, uh, the implications or the DOME project as it pr relates to the society as a mechanism for people to take more controllers and overall infrastructure. Tell me a little bit about uh, DOME. As I mentioned uh, in the other segment, uh, I had learned about DOME through uh, Dr. Eric Topol's book, The Patient Will See You Now and uh, the Economist magazine, which it started out as a project for your graduate work in London. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And yes. uh, it was actually in the, uh, in the College of Arts, but now we've moved into the healthcare arena. <laughs> yes. I think it, it, it's heavily existing in the healthcare arena, but it does apply to, to other areas just, um, with personal information. Tell me the, uh, the the timeline, or you know, where are you at now in terms of uh, conceptualizing or production or thinking? What's uh, how are things going? Well, these things are quite slow. Um, I don't have angel investors behind me. I don't have any <laughs> um, major funding, and I'm not also a technical person. So it goes little by little. Um, also, to keep up with constantly changing technologies is also a difficult thing. Um, products are becoming smaller and more invisible. Um, so for the moment, it's in a kind of a temporary standstill production-wise um, as I've gone through some of the legal aspects of the co of the project of being uh, a corporation. It's also because I don't want it to be a, a typical startup um, that will have to go with the whims of investors, which is what we often see with, with tech companies now, um, that I prefer that it's something that's built together by like-minded people um, rather than, than just hiring a bunch of developers. Um, so this is this is something that I would like to say in the interview if there's anybody interested in working on this together uh, I'm welcome to to speak to you and I'd be more than happy to to have that help. Absolutely. Well, I think that's part of the society from a grassroots networking perspective almost like a uh, crowdsourcing uh, development and uh, sharing of ideas across multiple uh, domains and you'd be amazed and surprised that uh, if you look through the directory uh, the, the nature of folks that are uh, both practitioners as well as uh, patients or have gone through uh, both sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. uh, on DOME, uh, tell me a little bit more about the, uh, the uh, economics because I think that that was something I know you and I have had some discussions over the recent months. Tell me about the uh, the vision from a being able to control the use of data from an individual's perspective. Well, for the economic side of it, um, we're dealing with uh, basically a, t a trillion dollar industry just in a few years. Um, some say just in Europe alone, which means even more so in the States. Um, there's a lot of, uh, particularly in the States, I see this as something that I don't understand why, why there's so much value. Not, I don't, it's not that I don't understand the amount of value in it, but it's, we're, we're struggling with things like healthcare reform, Medicaid, other people will, um, ha still have Medicare in the future. But meanwhile, this is like a, a very, very large industry just on healthcare alone. And if the, I guess, politics could set in, step in and create some policies around personal information and that it belongs to an individual and that there were maybe alternative structures um, or institutions like we see emerging now health banks, um, but they're still privately owned. Uh, but if something like a cooperative data broker could be established um, or that it's a nationalized institution collecting the information and that 
provide the more uh, national health care. I mean, this, uh, these are concerns that I know Americans are very wary of with the, the choice of words that I might use. But I start to see um, people realizing, particularly first you see companies realizing the value of the information. Then you see um, some individuals realizing that setting up new companies, like in Switzerland you have a health, a health bank uh, that's cooperatively owned by its contributors um, and that the contributors receive dividends for the information sold and it's anonymized. Its value comes from the combination of information, so one person's information is not very valuable, but more and more people together. And ultimately, I want people to think of themselves more as producers um, rather than consumers, that you're constantly generating information, therefore you're constantly generating value that currently is being um, marketed or commodified and that we don't really know how this information is being used um, or what we do know. Um, it's it, the economics of scale go on to beyond, I guess, beyond um, our current um, time. Like it's it's a longer scale, and if we can we can look at the impacts of that, not just economically but socially, um, and even through the job market, through um, political systems. It, it has great ramifications, so... Putting the power in the hands of the consumer. <laughs> I mean, that's that was a bit of a long... <laughs> no, that's <laughs> great, though. Yeah, because I think ultimately that's, that's where we're headed is, you know, what is the right disruptive technologies that will put the power in the hand of uh, stand, regular people, lay people, yeah. Uh, to take better control of, of their health and their lives and their finances their, their, and realize the asset value of the data that they have. Yeah. And, well, I can tell you, it's not going to be one where there's um, investors that are only allowed to invest because they're being venture capitalists or shareholders that are not, um, have direct impact based of the product except for a bottom line. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't trust any or majority of um, products that are put out there and this is you start to see a lot of grassroots projects or individual um, efforts made to like we have talked about people who who are doing little things because of an illness they have or they have an issue that they're trying to deal with and the impacts that they make um, through their small technologies or however big it gets are much more valuable I think than, than just something that tells you how many steps you've walked or yeah. yep, absolutely have you followed the, uh, the the initiative with the National Institutes of Health uh, with the Precision Medicine Initiative and the release of the report the month before last year? no I haven't the uh, uh, Dr. Collins uh, had then released a, 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 sh a graph that showed where they're ultimately trying to get a cohort of a million participants to the biobank or to uh, contribute that data. And one of the lines was consumers, and obviously that's where the Society uh, for Participatory Medicine would like to play. How would you see DOME uh, fitting into that as a, uh, a control mechanism or as a, a, a mechanism for people to the, be able to use that as a contributing tool or as a gateway? Well, DOME would be kind of an initial point because, you know, we have all these repositories to put the data or to share it with or have it taken, but the means of collection... Um, all done kind of on a local scale. Mm -hmm. I think of the individual as the center of that local scale or their environment mm -hmm. and something near them. So DOME, Dome is, a, is a mechanism, almost like a, an operating system, but complete with sensors. Um, and it's a way to, to collect all of that near you 
place it somewhere that you want it to be. Um, later, uh, the idea is to have uh, a dome platform, um, and and then to have terms and licenses and also location aware or t tagging the data. Um, we also need to develop methods of actually destroying information or letting it expire, having it expire. Um, so this so dome in this situation would be an intermediary between you and the precision initiative, precision medicine initiative, um, where they would have to agree to your terms as well. Uh, and you would know, hopefully, that what they what they do with the information and where it goes to after that. Mm -hmm. um, and if it goes beyond what was accepted. I, I don't know enough about this initiative to understand what their intentions are with the information, how they're going to use it. Um, I haven't really read the business plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's quite uh, quite interesting and definitely something that I would see Dome uh, adding a lot of value from a consumer controls perspective. Mm -hmm. What uh, what Jennifer are some other thoughts or um, as we uh, kind of wrap up here today that uh, you'd like to see beyond the uh, uh, what you shared earlier on the society, both from a, a give and take perspective. I would like to see more. Um, I guess more collaboration with the between the patients and the doctors, and more transparency about the insurance relationships with practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, more understanding of how information. Current. I don't actually. One thing I would like to see is more um, more opportunities to work with practitioners. And rather than like to look at things, uh, for example, like to get a genomic testing uh, is very difficult to do through a lab, through a doctor, or it's not difficult, but it's a lot of people go to private companies because it's much more affordable or you're told you're going to get specific things. And I would just like to see more of the, the services that we're, we're using. Um, with these private companies, something like more of a discussion with practitioners. I guess I'm a bad person to ask about that because I, I haven't been in the states dealing with <laughs> U.S. healthcare for a long time. Um, but for the Society of Participatory Medicine, I think it's a great, a great, um, a great foundation that exists, and just more dialogue on my behalf of, um, with practitioners and like I said the transparency. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well uh, Jennifer I thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, if people want to get a uh, hold of you if they didn't see the uh, shorter segment what's the best way to reach you? Uh, by email. Okay. So jennifer.marone M-O-R-O-N-E at network.rca.ac.uk Excellent. We'll put that uh, link also in the, uh, the newsletter before the video. But uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, this is John Hoban signing off for the Society for Participatory Medicine. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.